from the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports. Good evening, Mid Missouri. I'm L.C. Chandler. It's time to talk sports. The Mizzou football team held its second spring scrimmage this morning. It was the first time the team spoke to the media about DGB's dismissal from the program. KMU 8's Mahir Bagat has the report. Two years ago, Doyle Green Beckham was supposed to be the future of Mizzou football. Today, we got our first look at the future without him. That's the priority, to do what's right. And you don't, what right isn't saying, gosh, we're losing a really good player and you know, we're going to really miss him next year. You, I, you can't make a decision. I don't, I'd never make a decision like that. It was a tough decision. You know, it, it was tough for me and I'm sure it was tough for a lot of the guys on the team. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want to see him leave. It's a huge message to all of us, you know. It's, it's really saying, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, no one's bigger than the team. And you got to follow the rules and guidelines that Coach Pinkle and Mike Alden said. Yeah, I talked to him a little bit yesterday, and he was taking it tough, but, you know, I, I, I'm in his corner. I have, you know, a lot of support for him, so whatever he needs, you know, I'm here for him. Uh, we just talked about, you know, making some good good decisions, you know, how, how he was going to move forward from this and just the things he can do in the future, you know, to prevent situations like this. He's a good person, so I don't know the image that he has for himself now that everybody else sees, but I know my image of him stays the same. I love that kid, you know, and I want him to get some help and he can go to another place get a fresh start and uh, he can you know still achieve achieve his goals dgb has three options when it comes to his football future number one he can play at an fcs school next year number two he can sit out next year and play at an fps school in 2015 and number three he can sit out next year and declare for the 2015 nfl draft quarterback matty mock told me that dgb has all the potential in the world if he gets his head on straight He'll be fine. Reporting from Faro Field, I'm here Begut, KOMU 8 Sports. Thanks, Mahir. With DGB gone, the current receivers on roster combined for just four touchdowns last season. In today's scrimmage, it took the offense 19 possessions before they even scored a touchdown. The final score was 18-16 with the defense winning the scrimmage. Now for the games played on a diamond. From college to the big leagues, Missouri Tigers softball and baseball in action today, along with both the Kansas City Royals and St. Louis Cardinals. And to remind all the male viewers out there, chivalry isn't dead? Let's start with the ladies first. The number 16 Missouri Tigers got an 8-7 win over the number 20 Auburn Tigers. Top first, Blue Springs native Mackenzie Sykes got things going with a two-run homer. In the second, the team put up five more runs to take a 7-0 lead. Then, after the fifth inning rally by Auburn to tie it all at seven, well, Sykes answered the call with another long ball, this time a solo shot. Her third hit of the day, career-high second home run in a game, and career-high in RBIs with six. Tigers baseball has a tough act to follow after that. They're in Lexington tonight for their second game of a three-game series with the number 15 Kentucky Wild Wildcats. That game just got underway, and we'll have updates on that one for you inside the six. Now to Kansas City Royals, still winless on the road this year, facing Ricky Nolasco making his debut at Target Field as a twin today, bottom first. Didn't take long for the Twins to hop on the scoreboard, bottom of the first Minnesota's Brian Dozier Swats the James Shields pitch to deep left, and it's gone. Minnesota up 1-0. Bottom second inning. Twins up 4-0, and the batting onslaught just continues. This time, Joe Maurer, who knocks this one out of the center field wall, over the center field wall, bringing home Aaron Hicks and Brian Dozier. Just not happy. It's a three-run homer by Maurer. Minnesota up 7-0. Too little too late for the Royals' top ninth, Michael Tonkin on the mound, and to relieve Nolasco, Kansas City's Mike Moustakas hits this one right over the right baseline. The Tigers, Twins win it, excuse me, over the Royals 7-1, winning their first series at home this season. To Bush Stadium we go. Adam Wainwright, Wainwright looking to win his second game of the year and go up 2-1. Gave up a homer in the first, but his boys had his back. Bottom second, Matt Adams with one over the right field wall. Takes Carlos Villanueva over the wall. For his first homer of the year, Chicago can't get out of the second inning fast enough. Matt Carpenter dribbles in the infield, second to short, to score David Descalso. That'll make it 4-1 Cardinals over the Cubs. Villanueva only lasts three innings after giving up nine runs on just ten hits. Bottom four, 7-2, St. Louis gets another one. Chris Runson on the, on the mound, and he had no better luck. Bases juice, center fielder John Jay goes other way to left, Colton Wong and Matt Holliday score 9-2 advantage. Adam Wainwright will put the thing away after giving up a leadoff homer. He gets the best of Junior Lake here. He 
ends the Cubs' seventh inning, Fanning Lake, for the second time today. Wainwright gets the win after seven strong innings. Chicago, four. St. Louis, just ten. After all the madness of March, it's kind of time to settle down with the tranquil setting of the Masters at Augusta National in Georgia. Now, many believe without Tiger Woods in the hunt, it would lessen the draw of this event. But dozens of men in pursuit of one green jacket and a lifetime membership to the club, well, that kind of competition can never disappoint. There it is, one of the most beautiful courses in the country. Day three of the tournament, and Bubba Watson started the day with a three-stroke lead at seven under. Second hole of the day, and Bubba just adds to it. Gets things going, draining an eagle putt to move to eight under. Now, heading in the opposite direction, Adam Scott, reigning champ of the Masters, started his day at three under. Here on the fourth hole, misses and bogeys. He backed up all the way to, seven un uh, to seventh on the day, one plus to end the day. Now here on the round on moving day, Angel Jimenez. Miguel Angel Jimenez here draining the long birdie putt on the 16th to move to three. Jimenez shoots 66 to leap back to the top, near the top of the leaderboard. He's in serious contention. Bubba Watson now at the seventh. He'll get it in coming back on the day. Now he would finish the day in a tie with Jordan Spieth for the lead. There's Thomas Bourne there wrapping things up. He's also in the hunt in third. More to come on the Masters later at KMU 8 News at 10. That's it for sports. More KMU8 News at 6 after the break.